funk, it's about the spaces in between. Everything has a space. One, two, three, four. If you fill up too many of those spaces, you lose the funk. I was born in San Francisco and raised in Detroit. Detroit was unique in the sense that eight blocks that way, some of the miracles lived. And 10 blocks that way, some of the guys from the Temptations actually live and their kids went to the same school. So you felt like it was within your grasp to be a star. I used to have a band called Juice Man and His Men when I was 15 years old. And it was somewhere between wanting to be Funkadelic and John McLaughlin and Ralph Towner. It was just such a rhythmic and an exciting thing when we would play. We played freely. After high school, I ended up doing a house band gig at the Mozambique. And it was there that I, I, I did a couple of shows where I played with Brooke Benton, which was a big deal because he's an R&B legend. But I would do the solo on the Bo Weevil song. Feedback, dive bombs, the whole nine yards. So Brooke Benton would be like, oh God, Randy Dynamite's getting ready to take a solo, give me a drink. And I was that wild kid that did these wild things and played this wild music. They started calling me Randy Dynamite and, and that's sort of where it began. At that show, you would see David Ruffin or, or, or Smokey Robinson. In the crowd, the, the, on the third night was Michael Henderson. Came up to me and said, man, you gotta come and try out for my band. Everybody knew Michael Henderson. 13 years old, he played with Stevie Wonder. He played with Miles Davis when he was like 16, 17 years old. But that was like the big start of moving beyond just being the guy in the neighborhood and playing guitar. I was recording at Sound Suite Studios in Detroit. Don was at work late at night. So he was there one morning, he asked me, he, who I was there with, I said, Michael Henderson. He says, oh, oh man, he's got that hit wide receiver. And I said, yeah, I co-wrote it with him. He says, how'd you guys come up with it? We started writing a few things together. I wrote a song for the legendary Sweet B. Atkinson, front man for Was Not Was, with Don and David Was, called Dig Deep. And that was probably our first real writing thing together. In 1981, I officially joined Was Not Was as a guitar player. It was a great moment for me. It literally changed my life. Around 1984 or 85, Don asked me to come to New York to write some songs. And I started playing these grooves that uh, eventually turned into Walker Dinosaur. And then like two years later, he tells me the song is coming out. And I said, wow. It was pretty amazing. Walker Dinosaur was a top 10 hit everywhere in the world. In 1992, Sweepy ended up calling me and saying that it, the record that they had done wasn't coming out. And I said, really? He said, you want to do this band with me? And he said, great, let's do that. We were doing a session for Bonnie Raitt for her record, Longing in Our Hearts. And we were standing outside the studio, and uh, she came out and she said, what are you guys doing here? Just around here shaking your bones. I wanted to do something a little different. I took the baseline idea from Mother Popcorn. <laughs> the shuffle idea from Tired of Your Jive from B.B. King and then put it all together. I don't care about your past. I just won't. It became Bone Shaker's Cold Sweat. I found some cassettes of, of some things that we played in high school and out of those five ideas I, I completed them, and then I started five new ideas. And when we went in the studio with the musicians, it was saying, don't think about making a record. Don't think about that, that we're, that we're going to be on the wave or that we're going to be on R&B radio. Let's, let's just play. Play what you feel. That was the scenario behind the, uh, the title, The Return of Randy Dynamite. For this record, I felt like I needed a special crew of people, and I chose John Gillerton, who's played with Linda Ronstadt, Aretha Franklin, Bruce Hornsby, for the keyboard section. On drums was Greg Bissonette, who's a, a former Detroiter himself. I knew his father, who was a great drummer. And he's played with Ringo Starr, Steve Vai, David Lee Roth, Maynard Ferguson. He had everything I needed from jazz to rock to funk. He could do it all. Based on the sessions was Giovanni Collier, you know, former Detroiter who's, who played with us and was not was, and uh, I'd known for a long time. He's played with Pointer Sisters and Herbie Hancock. On saxophone, I chose Schiltz from London, England. He'd been working with us with Was Not Was, and I always loved his work with the brand new heavies. A perfect example of me taking uh, an idea from that time period was For All Your Funky Needs. I only kept the original changes. So 
I had to come up with the rest of it. I just record I wanted to be really funky, and that's my interpretation of funk. A lot of guys that I started out listening to, in Detroit especially, uh, the Fabulous Counts, Rudy Robinson and the Hungry Five, the Meters, of course, from New Orleans, sort of had the chicken picking thing in their style, but I started to, because I listened to other people like Jim Hall, with chord changes, I, I, wanted, to incorpor I wanted to have all that within, within my music for this record. So you have that, especially in for all your funky needs. You get that whole vibe of the the funk, and you get the you get that that jazzy choral thing that I, I hear in my head all the time. So it just it definitely. Um, for me, this, this, this particular song really, really sings out in all the elements that I wanted to get out in the record. Writing songs comes in two different ways for me. That just came from humming ideas. I'll be driving along. Doo, 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 doo. Oh, man, where's my iPhone? Doo, 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 doo. You, sing it, doo, 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 doo. you get home and you hope that you, <laughs> you know, you don't lose it. in a rush, you know, you take the milk, you put it in the cabinet, I took the fish, I made a sandwich, I put it in the snack bowl. A couple days later, who put the fish in the snack bowl? And there it was. Love you back. And this is one way the guitar led me to it. Sometimes you're just playing, and then the idea comes to you, you start developing that idea. You know, it would be great if I could have a song that sort of had a slight reggae feel, but but I, the melodies wouldn't be a single line. It would be, it would be chordal, so... <laughs> like a beautiful piece of music for me. And to see it complete really gets to you that you actually made it happen. This record was more important for me to make people understand what the song was about. So I spent a lot of time working on it. Everything's like right there for you. And that was important in terms of the, the Randy Dynamite style, to have that complete sound within the guitar, because most of the tracks are just one guitar and just minimal overdubs, and that was important too, is that I wanted to get back to what I grew up with, listening to the Fabulous Counts and Grant Green and, and, and a lot of guys. There really is only one guitar. A lot of cool things happened because we were all playing together at the same time, and, and Rumpulator is one of those. So you got the funk going, right? And then you, you say, okay, and I'm gonna kick into the solo. So I kicked into the solo. Everybody's like, oh my God, he's gonna solo right now. So nobody had planned it. I think they all thought, you know, I was gonna record the rhythm and then do the solo. But we ended up using it. It was much more of a, a fun thing for me. those moments where we're all interacting off of everything that happens, you know, between myself and Greg, myself and Giovanni, myself and John Gillerton, you hear all those different things. A perfect example of that is, is how Greg interacts with me on my solo on Trouble Funk. He's playing, he's totally playing off of me. Everything that I do, if I go down, down, he's like, doom, doom, he's like right there with me. He's like playing off the whole thing. And you can't get that if you're older, does it? You don't, you don't get the same reaction. I'm like looking at him, and he's looking at me, and sometimes I'm not looking at him, and he's totally like feeling where I'm at with it. And that was well worth the price of admission for me. So on the Grand River 
in Detroit, and it was a storefront church. It was the first time I'd ever heard a shuffle. We put on my shark skin suit and my little tie and got us all dressed up in our pad leather shoes. And you know, all of us, we all had to be like, you know, six, seven years old. And I remember it vividly. We went there and the, uh, the husband played the piano and the bass drum and the wife played guitar. And everything was a shuffle. Yeah, that was a big influence on me in terms of the blues. And I wanted to do something on this record that had that feel. I feel like this record, for the first time maybe in my entire life, I've finally made something that, that really shows my style and how I play and, and the way I think. It's all on that record. Mm -hmm. 